Five Nights at Freddy's is turning 10 years old this year. After a huge lineup of successful games, a metric shit ton of merch, and the development for a second movie underway, I decided to play the original four games. In this video, I'll be breaking down FNAF 1 through 4 in detail, from code to how mechanics work and the strategy that each of the games uses, all while playing through the hardest night of each of the base games. Welcome to the Tundra. My name is Gumball, and this is the Five Nights at Freddy's Experience. Okay, so basically, I'm going to be playing Night 6 on FNAF 1, 2, and technically 3, because 3 is also Nightmare, and then Nightmare on FNAF 4. These are the hardest nights in each of the games, base game-wise. Bonnie and Chica are pretty straightforward. They'll just move around with every given movement opportunity. They will not always go straight to your door. Freddy works extremely differently. I actually don't even know how Freddy's AI works necessarily, but I do know that uh, his movement opportunities are always stopped if you have the camera on him. On Night 6, it, it that is just how it works. Um, on 20-20-20 mode, he will still advance. He, he won't move when the camera's on him, but as soon as you take the camera off, he'll move. That's going to be what this whole strategy revolves around. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is put the cam uh, on 1A. To explain in further detail, the movement opportunities each of the animatronics have are all set to slightly different intervals, which are on screen now. I'll explain the movement opportunity system in more detail I when I get to don't Freddy. Need to check the cameras yet. Bonnie's pathing is non-linear, but once he enters your left hall, he can either enter the supply closet on cam 3 or advance to 2B outside your door. From this point, Bonnie can move from his chosen location to the cam that he didn't choose or straight to your door. After a failed movement opportunity to get into your office, Bonnie will teleport back to 1B. Chica's pathing is more linear, always ending up at cam 4A in your right hallway, then 4B on her next movement. After a failed movement opportunity to get into your office, Chica is sent back to 4A, which opens up a movement back to 1B or back to 4B right outside your door. Come on. God, my movement is so fucking crap right now. As you can see, I'm keeping my camera on Freddy, which keeps him from moving off of the stage. This does not work in 420 mode. I also have my game windowed right now, so it's like super inconvenient whenever my mouse scrolls off. I'm also bleeding power. Uh, I forgot to mention when talking about Foxy is that you don't actually need to have the camera on him. It's just when the cameras are open. So whenever I'm checking Freddy, that also accounts for Foxy. Foxy is partially RNG based. Let me explain. After checking the camera, pulling it down generates a random number between 50 and 1050. The game will count down one per frame, and Foxy will be stunned until that number hits zero. FNAF 1 runs at 60 FPS, so Foxy can stay stunned anywhere between 0.83 seconds and 17.5 seconds. This acts completely separately from his normal movement opportunities at any AI level. This actually means that if you capped the game's FPS to 1, you could beat 420 mode by doing okay, absolutely nothing since you would never have to flip up the camera when Chica, Bonnie, and Freddy are in your office. Although, the noise is stopped, so... With all that explained, Foxy's movement opportunities are pretty straightforward. Foxy has three attack stages, and each successful movement opportunity advances his attack. His first stage is him peeking out of Pirate's Cove. Stage 2 is him leaning out of Pirate's Cove, and on stage 3, he leaves 1C altogether, and you have 25 seconds to check cam 2A and close your left door to defend against his attack. Come on. The first time Foxy hits your door, he takes 1% of your power. Each additional attack on your door has a 5% penalty added, meaning that you basically can't survive Foxy charging your door more than once without running out of power. Uh, 2AM, we're doing actually perfect on power right now. I think we are going to run out of power like right at 6 a.m. But that's not really a big deal. It's honestly strange that I have just not seen Chica more than once or Bonnie more than twice. Freddy might be getting ready to be a goober here and uh, move off the stage. There we go. The last animatronic I need to talk about is Freddy, who is a bit more complicated in how his movements work. Freddy's movement timer is 3.02 seconds. 
like all other animatronics, during each one of these intervals, Freddy generates a number between 1 and 20 and compares it to his current AI level. And if that generated number is less than or equal to Freddy's AI, he'll have a successful movement opportunity. This is how all of the animatronics in this game work, but now is where things get confusing. Each time Freddy has a successful movement opportunity, he doesn't move immediately. There's Bonnie again. He actually starts a timer starting at 1,000 frames and subtracts 100 times his AI level. On night 6, with an AI level of 4, here's what the formula looks like. Running at 60 FPS, that means that every time Freddy has a successful movement opportunity, it will take him 10 seconds to move on this night. This also means that if Freddy's AI is 10 or above, he will move instantly. I'm not done yet though, because Freddy's mechanics also involve the cameras. We're doing actually a really good job at keeping Freddy array, array away. Once he reaches one of his 3.02 second intervals, if you're watching his camera, the movement opportunity automatically fails. If he has a successful movement opportunity, watching his camera will reset the timer to zero seconds, but will start counting again. This strategy is called cam stalling, and it only works if Freddy's AI is below 10. Ugh. Freddy actually goes even deeper, as once he reaches your right door on cam 4B, his mechanics change entirely. Freddy cannot get into your office when the cams are down, and since he can't advance any further, looking at him on the cameras freezes him in place while satisfying Foxy's conditions. This does work when Freddy's AI is above 9, and is the main strategy used in 2020-2020 mode. Oh my god, go the fuck away. So you can always afford Foxy to hit your door once, because uh, the first time he only takes 1%. Uh, Every time after that, I think it advances by 6%, or it might be 5%. I don't remember which one. Basically, if Foxy hits your door twice, you don't have enough power to win. That's basically everything relevant in FNAF 1 Explained. It should be noted that the only reason I had enough time to explain everything was because Five Nights at Freddy's 1 has the longest nights in the series at 8 minutes and 55 which seconds one? per night. One of you is. I can literally fucking hear you. I think it's late enough now where I'll just let the rest of the footage play out without any voiceover. The way I know that Bonnie was there is that I heard the... I heard the... Woo -woo 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 -woo. Kind of like the wub wubs. Which they only do from like night four or five onward. Um, super mid on power at the moment. It doesn't look like Foxy's gonna hit our door at all though. Yeah, heard that. Come on. I know one of them's there. I'm pretty sure that's Chica because Bonnie left, and I'm pretty sure Bonnie resets. Which one? Oh my god. Okay, that's fucking creepy. Thank you. Thank you, game, for the Easter egg. Oh, I fucking failed Foxy's check. See, Foxy went from having no advancement on his AI whatsoever to now being ready to attack me. Okay. We're running pretty low on power here. At this point, I don't need to check on Freddy at all. I don't think he's going to make it to my door at all anyway. We're running low on power. Um, now we sit and do nothing. Um, I don't think I died to Foxy here. I think I passed the timer. Okay, there we go. Oh, first tried that shit. Mm. I mean... 
FNAF 1 is actually the easiest one, so that's actually not that surprising. Let's explain FNAF 2 real quick. So basically, the entire strategy revolves around the music box. That's it. <laughs> Be smart, be fast, like it's it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, I do know that in 10-20 uh, mode, none of the AI actually hit level 20. Moving on to FNAF 2. This game is a lot easier to explain despite having a lot more going on. Yeah, on the game has 11 animatronics, but four of them function identically. Mangle, Toy Bonnie, and Toy Chica only function slightly differently. Balloon Boy doesn't kill you, and Golden Freddy doesn't have a blackout phase despite being an office animatronic. That just leaves the marionette and Withered Foxy. FNAF 2's main problem children. I'll explain the marionette first since you might have noticed that I'm spending there. most of my time winding its music box. You never get to see it, but the marionette does actually have an AI level. This does not set the timer for the music box, rather how fast the marionette kills you after the music box winds down all the way to zero. The music box timer and built-in AI level for the marionette is the exact same on Night 6 as the Custom Night, meaning that we're basically playing with 1020 modes marionette. To explain the music box, each night has a preset timer. The timer starts at 2000, and every 50 milliseconds, a number is subtracted from the music box. For night 6 and custom night, the number visiting. is 6. That means that for these nights, Jesus the total music Christ. box timer is 16.67 seconds. This game's animatronics move based on the same movement opportunity system as Five Nights at Freddy's 1. However, yeah, the movement intervals are okay. all 5 seconds meaning there is no desync in movement between animatronics. And if this sounds extremely exploitable, it's because it is. It actually goes a bit further, because on top of the global 5 second movement timer, the game also has a global 10 second interval timer that Foxy uses when trying to kill you, and the vent animatronics use when pulling down your monitor. Foxy's attacks are always stopped under two conditions. One is if you flashed him in the last 50 frames, and the other is if another animatronic initiates a blackout phase. If Foxy is stopped by a blackout phase, his attack rolls over to the next 10 second interval. Chica again, Jesus. This would be a problem if there wasn't four animatronics pulling you out of your cameras and starting blackouts on the exact same interval. Meaning that you can basically get into a loop where Foxy can never kill you if you know exactly which interval you're on, and you're lucky enough for an animatronic to always initiate a blackout. This would mean that a true 1020 mode is much, much easier than the capped AI that's actually in the game. If you weren't aware, the game caps each of the animatronics at the values shown on screen, meaning this is what our actual 1020 mode is. Golden Freddy can appear in your office or in the hall. Now I'll explain Foxy in more detail, since I'll be using this video as a reference for my upcoming X20 mode playthroughs. In the game's code, there's a value called D. This value goes up by 1 every second if whether Bonnie, Chica, Freddy, and Toy Freddy are not standing in your office. If you're wearing the Freddy head when you don't have any threats present, D will go up by 2 per second. Flashing Foxy in the hallway resets D to 0. On each of Foxy's 5 second intervals, the game will generate a number between 21 and 25 and subtract D from it. If the generator number is above Foxy's AI level, Foxy will not move. This is why on the custom night, Foxy will move even if his AI is set to 0, because D is still present throughout the entire night, and when reaching 25, will always force him to move. While in the hallway, Foxy has a counter that goes up by 1 for every frame you have your flashlight on him. Once this counter reaches 100 times the night number, he goes back to parts and services and gets stunned for anywhere between 8.33 seconds and 16.67 seconds. Normally though, his attack timer is set to 50. If the counter is 0 on Foxy's next movement opportunity, he'll attack. Flashing him resets the counter to 50. This means that Foxy's timer depletes in 0.83 seconds, which is insane. I didn't leave on my mask long enough for Mangle. I'm fucked. But remember that you can basically always flash him within 0.83 seconds of his next movement opportunity to automatically make him fail it. If you aren't on that cycle, you can usually get back on it by forcing blackouts with the yeah, office Mangle's animatronics. In. It's possible to not to die Mangle, but like it's basically guaranteed. I don't know why Mangle just didn't leave. That's fucking annoying. Although I don't know if Mingle can kill you during another blackout phase, so if I just get attacked by a bunch of shit, then I won't die. Hey everyone, post uh, production gum here. I just want to say that what I just said here about Mangle is just blatantly wrong. Uh, shout out to It's Taken for giving me the info here, as well as on the video on FNAF 4, which I used as a reference for all the research I did in this video. 
Once Mangle is in your office, there is a 5% chance every second you're in the camera that Mangle will kill you. Not only was I wrong here, but the opposite is true. Mangle actually takes priority over every other animatronic to kill you once the 5% check succeeds. I wasn't lucky in this run because I kept getting blackouts. I was lucky because I survived 62 total seconds in the camera with Mangle in the office, this is what I mean. which is roughly a 4% chance of that happening. Since I have the time, I'll explain all of the other animatronics in this game. Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, and Withered Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica all have a Q mechanic so their attacks don't overlap. When one of them is in your office, and another one of them shows up, they'll wait for the next 10 second interval to initiate a blackout. The order they go is first come first serve, except for Toy Bonnie, who will wait until all of the other animatronics are gone to do his blackout, or just leave while you have the mask on. Toy Bonnie is complete RNG, and is notorious for killing 1020 runs. Oh, do you see that? Oh, I actually saved myself. So basically, you can save yourself from the puppet by um, flashing your light while he's coming out before he plays his music. Outside of Toy Bonnie, the other vent animatronics are Toy Chica, Balloon Boy, and Mangle, all oh, of who yeah, leave after wearing the Freddy mask for five seconds, which is the exact duration Come of on. a blackout. Lastly, there's Golden oh. Freddy. On very rare movement yeah. opportunities, Golden Freddy can appear in the hallway if no one else is there. This isn't very relevant, so rather than just talking about it, I'll just put the formula on the screen. When he's in your office, though, flashing your flashlight or opening your monitor will kill you. Putting on the mask makes him disappear, but he'll never actually kill you if you don't put on the mask and if you use the vent lights. As long as I keep getting attacked, I might be okay. That's about everything in FNAF 2 explained. Like the first game, I'll let the rest of the footage play without any commentary. Oh, this is going to be close. Oh, come on. If I stay in a blackout phase during, like, basically this whole night, I'll be fine. Oh, I clutched that! <laughs> I cannot believe that actually worked! I first tried that too? I'm the god gamer! <laughs> Woo! Shit! <laughs> How the fuck did I win? That whole run was just insane! Alright, time for the worst one! <laughs> FNAF 3! I don't like this game. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is mechanically the most unique game out of the original four. Springtrap is the only animatronic that can kill you, and his movement formula does not use the same movement opportunity mechanic as FNAF 1, 2, and 4. I'll explain him in a second, but during this first attempt I want to explain the errors. Audio errors happen when you run out of audio lures or when Phantom Mangle enters your office. More specifically, all of the errors function on a 10-point system, or rather, a negative 10-point system. The value for all of your errors start at zero and adds a penalty under certain conditions. Using an audio lore adds the penalty of Springtrap's AI level. On Night 5 and Nightmare, the penalties are 5 and 7 respectively, meaning you only get two audio lures on each of these nights before you get an audio error. I don't see the fucker. For video errors, every 12 seconds of camera usage adds a penalty of the night number to your starting value of zero, meaning that to reach negative 10, nights 5 and 6 only give you 24 seconds of camera usage. For ventilation, getting jump scared by a phantom animatronic or having your ventilation counter hit negative 10 will cause a ventilation error. Ventilation errors make Springtrap more aggressive and cause hallucinations of Springtrap to appear in the cams, which I did not know on my playthrough. This is actually alluded to on Phone Dude's Night 1 call, which I never caught. Start seeing some crazy stuff, man. Keep that air flowing. If you're idling, the game will subtract 1 from your starting value of 0 in increments depending on your night number. For Nightmare, the number is 6 seconds. This would mean that you would get a random ventilation error every minute. However, you may have watched Chicken Ninja's video on this, where he says this. Like every other night, you're supposed to get a ventilation error after a certain amount of time, but for some reason, in this night, it just wasn't happening. 
So I looked up other people's videos, and yeah, you can't get a ventilation error in this night unless you get jump scared. The reason this happens is because the 6 second increment is set to happen when Springtrap's AI is 6, which it is not on Nightmare. Explaining Springtrap is hard, as he is the single most complex AI in the series. This is his movement formula. Do you understand this? I sure as shit don't. Thank god for YouTube and Reddit, because all I genuinely understand about this formula is that it runs every second. I will try to explain this the best I can, and if I make any mistakes, I'll just correct them on screen in post-production. The move counter will increase by 1 every second by default, and by 2 if the aggressive cheat is on. Then it gets compared to 5 different values every second to see if it's higher than all 5 of the values combined. The AI on Nightmare is 7. Aggressive question mark can only be 0 or 1. It can be set to 1 after a phantom jump scare, a ventilation error, idling for 10 seconds, or during hours of 4 or 5 a.m. No way, bro. I know where he is. Yup. <laughs> he went to Camp 10! He sure as shit did go to Camp 10 on his own! Aggressive question mark will be set to 0 every 15 seconds, but anything I just mentioned can turn it back immediately after. And like once Total turns adds one to the counter every time Springtrap fails to move when he's ready. This means every failed movement will cause him to move faster until he succeeds, basically. I don't, I mean, I I wouldn't say I breezed through the normal game, but this is like crazy that I've just died this many times. With all that being explained, once Springtrap's move counter is high enough and he's ready to move, the game will generate a number from 1 to 3 if, if aggressive question mark so is 0, to and 1 to 4 if aggressive died. question mark is 1. 1 means he failed his movement, and the total turns counter goes up by 1. 2 means he moves away from you, 3 means he moves toward you, and 4 means he enters a vent. This means that Springtrap can only enter vents if he's aggressive and that not being aggressive makes him 11% more likely to fail in movement. I just can't see him. I just can't find him. Bro, Springtrap is literally like the clit, bro. I just can't find him. Lastly, there's a 1 in 7 chance that an audio lure to an adjacent room will just fail. When an audio lure is successful, he will move randomly between 0 and 99 Ooh, frames, not including bro. if he's an event. All of that to say, Springtrap is complete RNG. I'm sure I'm fuck I'm him sure he just got and fuck FNAF 3. There is one more stage Springtrap has though. We'll see. Once Springtrap is past your window, he can no longer backtrack. After passing your window, he can move to the corner so on his next then. successful movement. In the corner, flipping your maintenance panel down can trigger Springtrap's hiding animation once per night. From there, he can move to cam 1 or your doorway if you're in the cameras or your maintenance panel. If he goes to camp one, he can go back to the corner or your doorway. Stop going to camp five! Jesus fucking Christ! While in your doorway, Springtrap only needs one more successful Ooh, movement to kill to you. Six. Staring at him stalls him, but although the night six random ventilation penalties don't occur, the penalty for idling for 10 seconds still stop. does. And with these ventilation errors, every blackout automatically advances Springtrap's attack by one stage once he is past your window. Meaning, unless it is the last 10 or so seconds of the night, oh, he's he will not win a stare oh, down. I think I'm dead. The Phantom animatronics are kind of complicated, but because they aren't yeah. lethal, I'll just put how each of them work on the screen instead of discussing them in full. The most important mechanics are that each Phantom animatronic can only jump scare you once per night, getting jump scared increases yep, Springtrap's aggression, close. and the Phantom Marionette forces blackouts much faster than normal, which forces right, Springtrap to advance his attack right stages. He does this for 16.67 seconds, and you can't use the cams or maintenance panel during this time. I, I actually just have no fucking idea what I'm doing. But yeah, we already beat we we beat Night Six and FNAF One and Two already. I'm he's right there. Yep. That's basically all of Five Nights at Freddy's Three explained. I'm not going as in depth with this game as Five Nights at Freddy's One or Two because I genuinely don't like this one very much and how player skill seemingly matters a little bit less than having good my luck life? sometimes. Nevertheless, here's the rest of my nightmare run. Hello? I think he actually went back to Cam 2 and then left. I thought for sure he was uh, running past me. 
Okay. You can... I... I didn't see the running animation, I will say that. I don't know if he went back to Camp 2 or not. I think he did. Yeah, that's my fault. That was me being slow. Oh, that sucks. No, I, I actually think I'm just gonna die. That, that was me being just genuinely slow. I don't know where he is right now. I'm gonna try to lure him back to five if he's not on five. But yeah, I just have no fucking clue where Springtrap is. Oh, I don't know who's subbing. Oh, thank you, though. I thought I had the alert box off. I actually... It's 5 a.m. Donnie might have given us a streamer luck. Oh, fuck. I think that was my second lore. Oh, no, bro. I have to just sit here. Oh, we're gonna have to play the waiting game. Because if I... At least this gives me more time because he'll still have to run to my door. But if I flip up the camera, he just instantly goes. Oh! Yes! Yes! Ilo with the sub log! Ah! Nightmare. Yay. I actually feel a lot more confident in my skills at FNAF 4 than FNAF 3, so we'll see. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 and 4 are tied for the shortest nights in the series at 6 minutes per night. Luckily, FNAF 4 is actually pretty easy to explain. To nightmare yet. There's no jump scares on this section of the video, so I'll use a lower voice to go with the quieter mood of this game. Information on FNAF 4 is scarce, and largely hard to come by. Because of that, information I'm using here will mostly be referenced by the FNAF 4 video It's Taken made. I, hear I highly, highly recommend watching this video for a more in-depth look on how this game works. Oh, that means that Bonnie's there, okay. Nightmare Bonnie and Nightmare Chico function mostly the same. They both start in the center of or the living not. room and use the AI out of 20 movement opportunity formula that the first two games used. Both of their movement intervals are five Chica's seconds. At the door. Nightmare Bonnie's path is linear, going from the left side of your living room, down your left hall, and finally to your left door. Nightmare Chica can go from the right side of the living room to the kitchen, where you would hear pots clanging. Chica has to move back to the right side of your living room in order to go down your right hall. This functions as a way I to desync her from back. Bonnie, as they both have the same movement intervals. From the far end of each hall, using your flashlight on Bonnie or Chica will reset nope. them to the center of the living room. Like Five Nights at Freddy's 2, FNAF 4 also has a universal time interval, although this one is 3 seconds. When Bonnie, Chica, Fredbear, or Nightmare are at your door, the game uses this 3 second global interval to clear them if you have the door closed. Lastly, there's an interesting mechanic where if Bonnie or Chica are on the far side of the hall, closing your door teleports them to it. This is actually super useful if you aren't sure if they're there or not. It should also be noted that not clearing them once they're at your door only gives you 20 minus the night number seconds to live if you do clear them. Got Foxy. Foxy also starts off in the living room, and on 5 second intervals will pick one side of it to go on. On his next interval, he has a 90% chance to move to the opposite side of the living room, and a 10% chance to move down that side's hallway. He can also go that down the same hall that Bonnie or Chica are occupying, so be weary of blindly flashing the hallway he goes down. If he's in one hall, and you go to the door on the opposite side, 
Foxy will run into your closet where his gameplay shifts. Once in your closet, Nightmare Foxy keeps his movement interval of 5 seconds, now using it to progress his attack stages. Stage 1 is 0 to 1 progress, stage 2 is 2 to 3, stage 3 is 4 to 5, and stage 4 is 6 plus. He automatically spawns with 3 to 7 progress when he gets into your closet, and kills you at 10 progress the next time you go back to the center of the bedroom. Each second you have the closet door closed decreases his progress by 1. Foxy is guaranteed to move at 10 AI, which he has starting at night 3, functionally making him the same throughout the entire game. Foxy's in. Yep. That's fine. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Nightmare Freddy is a bit of an outlier since you only ever see him when he kills you. His intervals are four seconds, but since he doesn't move, what he'll do is add his AI level to his progression. Every 10 progression adds a freddle to your freddles bed up to three. If you flash the bed once he's reached 60 Jesus progress, he'll Christ. kill you. And at 80 Foxy. progress, he'll kill you regardless of what you do. Using your flashlight on the bed otherwise decreases his progress by one every five milliseconds, or 20 times a second. The final animatronic to explain for this video is Nightmare. This will also explain Fredbear since the only difference between them is their intervals. Every movement interval, which is 2 seconds for Nightmare and 3 for Fredbear, they have an AI out of 20 chance to move. They both start in the center of the living room, with a 50-50 chance to go to either side. Once they pick a side, they have a 50% chance to move to the other side or that side's hallway. Moving down your hall has no sound cues. They also have a movement check that changes every second between 1 and 2. If that number stays the same for 20 seconds for Nightmare and 30 seconds for Fredbear, they'll laugh and teleport to your bed or your closet. Fredbear can do this up to 4 times on night 5, but every other night, the number of times they can do this is limited to 2. He's in... Additionally, every 10 seconds that they are not on your bed, they have a 10% chance to do a fake laugh. There are two ways to check for their laughs. If you hear the laugh happen at the same time as their footsteps, this is always a fake laugh, which seems to trick people super easily. The other way is if you hear a laugh, but no footsteps, you can flash the hall for about a third of a second without Nightmare killing you. If he's there, the laugh was obviously fake. If he isn't, the laugh was real. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 may not have a lot going on visually, but the ambience and sound cues amp up the intensity more than the other games for me. This is why the fourth game is the only one that really does still scare me. motherfucking damn oh my god my fucking armpits are i'm my armpits are so goddamn sweaty right now you can't see that shit but you trust take my word for it Whew, that was the first time i got to nightmare <laughs> and that's it that rush of dopamine hitting your brain when you reach 6 a.m after 6 to 10 minutes of butt clenching silence that's what makes the five nights at freddy's series so satisfying to play and watch I don't actually think any of the games outside of 4 are scary, more so just creepy, but I always come back to them. There's always something new and interesting to say about it, and that is the Five Nights at Freddy's experience.
Let's go ahead. Let's let's do the funny. 87. That is so goddamn loud. <laughs> Crashes the game. Tee hee.